welcome back yeah uh, we were this, this is uh, chapter 4 uh, part 2 yeah uh, second clip on chapter 4 we were looking at the plug variable yeah uh, in the last clip okay let's continue from there plug variable is a variable that is not predetermined yeah that means uh, you have to look at the outcome of the financial plan to uh, to see the uh, value for the plug variable yeah it's not predetermined yeah? so that is what we mean by plug variable and it's determined by management deciding what type of financing will be used yeah it's not only financing yeah but it can also mean other yeah? uh, means of uh, what you call uh, fulfilling yeah this financing need as you will see yeah? this can also mean uh, the divid dividend policy of the company not only financing yeah all right then we look at the economic assumptions okay uh, in uh, that is one of the ingredients yeah, uh, in the financial plan so you need to make explicit uh, explicit assumptions yeah, about the economic environment whether there will be a growth uh, or there will be a depression or a recession in the economy how uh, because this will affect the sales forecast yeah? so this economic assumptions are important Okay, but in the financial plan that we are going to look at in this chapter, some of these uh, assumptions, yeah, like the economic assumptions, are rather subtle. Yeah, you don't explicitly yeah, make those assumptions, but these are underlying assumptions in that uh, financial plan. Yeah, as you will see later. All right, let's move on. Uh, right. Yeah. So we move on to the next part. Let me look at an example here. Yeah? We try and apply. So with that, we finished. Yeah? We have finished the uh, first key concept in the chapter. Now we move on to the second key concept, which is to actually do the financial plan. Yeah? First, we look at the uh, various aspects of the financial plan. Now we try and apply this financial plan yeah? in a very simple manner first, and then in a more elaborate manner yeah? in the next example. So this example is a very simple. Yeah? Uh, what do you call uh, balance sheet here? Uh, the financial statement and balance sheet, as you, you can see. Okay, let me just get the pointer here. Okay, yeah. So you have the balance sheet for this year. Let's assume we are at the end of the year 2018. Yeah. And then you're also given the income statement here, yeah, for 2018. Now you need to do the forecast here yeah, for the year 2019. Okay, there are some assumptions yeah, given here. So the first assumption is that revenue will grow at 15%. Yeah? That means the uh, sales for the year 2019, that is the next year, uh, the sales will go up at 15%. Okay? That's the first assumption. So remember in the financial plan, the first ingredient is the sales, the forecasted sales. So we have that here. Yeah? All right, then the other assumptions are how do you tie the other items to sales? Yeah, so here it is uh, tied with a simple assumption here. All items are tied directly to sales. Yeah, so the current relationships are optimal. So the company is operating at optimal level. Yeah, what does that mean? Yeah, it implies that if sales go up, all the other items must also go up yeah? because this relationship is reflected by the ratio. Yeah? of uh, uh, that item to sales all right so when sales go up these items must also go up yeah? if sales go down okay then these items must also go down that's the implication of the relationships yeah being optimal so in the future uh, when the sales grow we assume that this relationship must hold is that okay so that's the assumption here yeah uh, this may not apply for all items yeah? later on you will see but then in the initial phase we assume that this is the case yeah? to make the financial plan uh, simpler yeah? right then so because of this assumption we know that all other items will also grow at 15 percent so that makes our forecasting or uh, financial plan yeah? uh, easier okay so that's the assumption here now, how do we go about doing this? Yeah, so it's easier to look at this in terms of uh, the financial plan in Excel. Yeah? So we try and look at it in Excel form here. Okay, 
okay you can see here okay now this part here is the uh, income statement okay this is for the year 2018 and it's taken from the slide okay, that, that we've just seen just now and you are you have the balance sheet here the balance sheet is given at the bottom this is the assets debt and equity all right and then you are told that uh, sales will increase by uh, 15 percent yeah but you're also told that uh, the dividend policy yeah, is variable okay the company's dividend policy is variable and uh, there are two cases yeah? if you look at the slides let's go back to the slides okay uh, if you go to the next slide here okay the first case there are two cases yeah, in um, uh, making this financial uh, plan yeah? the first uh, case of financial plan the dividends are the plug variable yeah so equity because it is the uh, dividend is a plug variable meaning that is determined last it's not predetermined therefore equity also will increase by 15 percent yeah so the idea here is in the first case you fix the capital structure okay but you allow the dividend policy to be variable Okay, so one must be variable out, out of these two. Yeah? Both cannot be fixed. Okay, that is why one is one must be a plug variable. All right. So uh, here, based on this assumption, yeah, we go back to Excel here. Okay, so these are given in steps. Yeah? You can see this numbering. So these are the steps yeah, in uh, doing the forecast yeah, or in doing the financial plan. So this is given. These are all given. This column is all given, right? Now you need to work out the figures in this column, right? So how do you go about doing that? Then you go step by step here. All right, the first step is sales, yeah? Sales is 2000 in the year 2018. You know that sales go up by 15%. Therefore, it must be 2300. The formula is, okay, 2000 multiplied by... 1 plus 15 percent because there's a 15 percent increase yeah? so this is the formula here yeah it's 2000 b4 multiplied by 1 plus 15 percent yeah so that's the answer here 2300 that's the first step okay now the second assumption says that all items yeah including cost so all items here there are only one item all the costs are lumped together they are aggregated yeah Therefore, here costs go up by 15% as well. Yeah, remember the, the assumption is okay, the company is operating at optimal level, yeah, meaning all costs are optimal compared to sales. Therefore, when sales increase, costs also must increase yeah, at the same rate. That's the assumption here. Yeah. Therefore, this 1600 also increases by 15%, so you get 1840. Same formula. Okay. 1,600 multiplied by 1 plus 15 percent. Yeah, you can see here. So you get this value here. Yeah, 1840. All right. Then the profit, the third step, yeah, is simply sales minus cost, which is 460. All right. So that you've got that there. Then the fourth step. Yeah, from third step, you move on to the fourth step. Okay. You skip this step here, yeah, dividend, yeah, even though it comes at the end of the income statement. Okay, but we don't do that first because dividend policy is variable. Yeah, it is a plug variable. Okay, that is why we determine, determine this last. That is what it means. Yeah, it's not predetermined. Yeah? Dividend policy is variable. Yeah? So the case, remember, in this case, capital policy, capital structure policy is fixed but the dividend policy is residual okay that means it is determined uh, last all right okay therefore we move on to the after the income statement here without going through the dividend we move on to the balance sheet yeah now balance sheet again the same assumptions remember all items increase by 15 percent okay because all items are used optimally yeah therefore this also increases by percent yeah so the formula is 1000 multiplied by 1 plus 15 percent yeah same formula all right so this is the fourth step 
Okay, you get that value. Then total assets is simply the same, right? So you, if this is 1,150, uh, this should be also 1,150. Right, once this total assets is 1,150, you know that the total liabilities and equity must be the same. Yeah? These two must be the same, cannot be different. Yeah? Therefore, this is step number six. You know that this must be equal to that. All right, then you are told that the capital structure is fixed. Remember in this case, yeah? capital structure is fixed, meaning uh, the increase in asset must be proportionately financed by debt and equity. Yeah? Therefore, Debt must also increase by 15%. Again, yeah, 400 multiplied by 1 plus 15%. Same formula. Yeah? Therefore, you get 460. Yeah? Here, equity also must go up by 15%. Yeah? Because in order to maintain the ratio of debt to equity, yeah, capital structure must be fixed. Here, the capital structure is 2 the uh, debt equity ratio is 2 over 3, 2 to 3, therefore here must also be 2 to 3. Yeah? So if this increases by 15%, this must also increase by 15% in order to maintain that ratio of debt to equity. Yeah? All right. Therefore, you find that this goes up to 690, yeah? proportionate increase. And there is yeah, this condition here, this can only increase proportionately if the equity increase here is 90 yeah? 60 sorry 600 increases to 690 therefore a 90 dollar increase uh, this uh, is possible because this 90 dollar increase is less than the total profit that the company has yeah if it is this increase is greater than the profit then this is not possible there will not be any proportional increase yeah all right therefore here uh, this condition allows yeah, because the profit is greater than the increase in equity so this is uh, able to sustain this proportionate increase yeah, in equity now therefore the last step yeah, once you have determined this last step uh, step number nine is to determine how much dividend needs to be paid yeah? so the dividend needs to be paid will be 460 minus the 90 that you retain yeah? the difference between this and this is $90, which will be the retained earnings. Of that. And that's the retained earnings. So if retained earnings is 90, so the remainder, okay, which is 370, will be paid out as dividend. Yeah? So 460 minus the difference between the two, which is 90, you get 370. So the idea is from the profit of 460, the company retains $90 to increase the equity and the remainder 370 will be paid out as dividend. Yeah? So that is the uh, uh, forecast. So here the idea is if the company's uh, sales yeah, are to increase by 15% and the company wants to maintain the capital structure okay, as it is now, then the dividend that the company can pay to its shareholders will be $370. They cannot pay more. Okay, so that's the idea behind this case one. Yeah? Now let's uh, look at case two. Yeah? This video is coming to an end soon. We have less than one minute here. But let's look at uh, the case two. Yeah? Same case, but um, same case, but we uh, have a different assumption yeah, here. In case two, the assumption is that the dividend policy is fixed. Yeah, you can't see it here. But, okay. The dividend policy is fixed. That means no dividends is paid. Yeah? It's fixed and no dividends is paid. And now the capital structure policy is residual, variable, or the plug variable. Yeah? Now we change the plug variable. In case one, the plug variable was dividend. Now, in case two, the plug variable is the uh, capital structure. Okay, the capital structure, debt equity capital structure. Yeah? So, we'll see this uh, case two in the next slide. Okay.